Welcome to this video. Today we have a completely different format. You can almost see me vlogging because I'm going to have surgery with you today. You are interested in the gold nets method. I said I'd take you with me to the operation and today is the day. I'll explain to you how the gold nets method works and we have to get started. Let's go to the operation. See you in a minute. So, we still have a few minutes before I start. I want to briefly explain to you again how the procedures for the operation are. It's not that complex, but if you've seen it before and understood it, then it becomes somewhat clearer in the operation. To do this, I try to give my drawing skills to the best again. So, basically, it's important to know which individual uterus we have in front of us. For this, we have such probes that can determine the total length of a uterine cavity. But we have to subtract the uterus from it. Because it's not supposed to be deodorized. That's very, very important. That's why we have to measure it separately. Then we get an individual length of the uterine cavity. What we also do in this regard is to look into the uterine cavity with a small camera, a so-called hysteroscope, to see if everything looks good, if there are any conspicuous things that could prevent such an operation or really suspicious places that need to be clarified in a different way. If everything is in order, the instrument is already inserted. The network is then unfolded here. And when this network is unfolded, the individual width of the uterine cavity is created. The network does that automatically. Once everything has been determined, the device automatically performs a so-called perforation test. That means it just checks whether a hole has formed in the uterus, for example at the steps before. Then it can basically start. High frequency electricity is then applied to the golden network, which then oxidizes the uterine mucosa. In the end, the result is looked at again with this camera in the uterine cavity, whether everything has really been caught and whether there is any bleeding, etc. And then all instruments are removed. So far the theory, now we want to move on to practice. And speaking of practice, that's where I'm going now, so we'll see you in a moment. Yes, as with any operation, hands are first disinfected and sterile gloves are put on. The anesthesiologist here then performs an anesthesia. The first step is, as I said, we have to first see how long the uterine and the uterine cavity itself is. For this we use small Hager pins. First we can open the uterus and then look. Speaking of looking, yes, with the camera, of course, we first look at what the uterine cavity looks like from the inside. If you're wondering what's storming in there, why are there air bubbles and it looks like it's very windy, that's water. Water is thus inserted into the uterine cavity so that it stretches, otherwise it would have collapsed. And here we also see an entrance from an egg ladder. And these little cracks that hang there, that's all slime. Yes, and then the gold nets instrument is unpacked. So it's a one-way product, you only use it once. And in front, that's why it has the name, is a small gold net, which then unfolds and the uterus is fastened. The uterus is set to the device itself for a longer time, then the device is first inserted. And if you unfold it in the uterine cavity, you can also see the width of the uterine cavity. The device does this automatically on this scale. All of this is entered, then pressed on the pedals and the oxidation begins. It runs automatically, so I don't do much more. When I have removed the instrument again, I check with the camera again to see if everything has really been oxidized. And the result looks like this, that you really only see oxidized slime here. The cracks are all flushed out with the uterine fluid. The device then shows the data at the end. Then there is a medical tampon inserted so that the uterine fluid is also absorbed. And that's it. So, that doesn't sound like that and doesn't look that spectacular either. And it's actually a small intervention after which you recover very well. Now, of course, you want to know for whom this intervention is actually suitable. It is mainly aimed at women who suffer from very, very severe regular bleeding. This is very often before the beginning of the changing years, in the so-called premenopause. Here there are simply hormone fluctuations that lead to a lot of mucosa being built up and it comes to strong and very long bleeding. I have also talked a lot about very strong bleeding. From when a bleeding is strong and what you can do there and what other causes it can cause, you are welcome to take a look up here when you feel picked up there. For these women, this intervention is a good option. In the past, the option was either, and it still exists, hormone spirals to chemically oxidize the mucosa or uterine removal. 
Now there is also an intermediate solution with this gold network, which is very interesting for many. It is approved for this. But there are also women who suffer from a so-called adenomyosis. And here, too, there is very strong and very painful bleeding. And here, too, you hope for a relief. But that's not what it was meant for. But in the years that we are now using it, we have noticed that it can also work quite well for such a patient clientele. Important, important, but this intervention is not suitable for every woman. Because family planning should be completed. This means that there is no longer any desire for children, neither in the next year nor in 10 years. Because of this polluted mucosa, it is still potentially and theoretically possible to become pregnant. But this pregnancy and also the birth can follow with considerable complications for the child and also the mother. That's why family planning should be completed. Other causes of bleeding disorders, meningitis, myomas, polyps, etc. should also be completed beforehand by the gynecologist. So a good examination should be carried out in advance. Myomas are not necessarily an exclusion criterion. It depends on where they sit. I have already made a video about myomas. You are welcome to take a look here if you are interested. For those who this intervention is really not suitable at all, I would like to list it for you here. A few things are self-explanatory, such as a pregnancy. Others, on the other hand, must be known. Because the C-section, i.e. the sectio perche, is not necessarily an exclusion criterion. With the C-section, however, it is really about the fact that this sectio is vertical, i.e. the section is performed vertically. That would be an exclusion criterion. This is an old section. If your C-section is a few years to decades back, you should perhaps request the op report here again, etc. So that you know which section is performed there. But with the normal C-section that is performed today, this is not a problem. What causes the intervention? This is almost self-explanatory, I think. If we completely remove the mucosa, then women have less to no regular bleeding. And those who have less to no regular bleeding, of course, also have less to no regular pain. That is why this op is also aimed at women with severe regular bleeding and severe pain. And those who bleed less no longer have the danger of ending up in a chronic iron deficiency. And of course, after a while, you feel fitter, more awake and more energized, because the loss of blood has disappeared. And all the side effects with such severe bleeding, psychologically, etc., we have already talked about in the other video. Of course, that also disappears. How do you feel after the intervention? Usually very good, because it is a small intervention and you usually have a full anesthesia. The pain afterwards is bearable, usually gone again after 24 hours. It probably feels like a pull just before the period. After that, you have a bit of a watery outflow. This is what you have seen, these tied mucous membranes, these feces, which then also flow off. And of course, a large wound area with wound fluid also develops. And that, too, can flow off up to a week later. What I always say to the patients, it can also smell a bit mushy. It's just this wound healing in itself, so don't let it irritate. In most cases, this is not a vaginal infection, etc., but this wound healing. When do you feel fit for everyday life again afterwards? For everyday life, as you have just heard, in most cases relatively quickly. We usually write three to four days sick. And then you can see if you feel fit again for work or if you still have to go into the extensions a bit. But usually, I can now also say from experience, you are usually pretty fit again after 48 hours. So that you can follow your everyday life. What can be, that your gynecologist says, please don't go into the bathtub afterwards. First of all, have no sexual intercourse, do not go to the swimming pools. Because, of course, the uterus was opened, because we have generated a large wound area. And you just want to avoid rising infections. You will now ask yourself, yes, that all sounds much too nice to be true. Where is the catch? In fact, there are of course also complications with an intervention. Even if these, with this type of intervention and, above all, if you look at the previous types of endometrial ablation, fall relatively low. I'll list them for you here. There are also classics that can occur with every operation. But especially severe pain after the operation should definitely be clarified again, in order to exclude possible complications during the intervention. Is this intervention taken over by the legal health insurance companies or in general the health insurance companies? Yes, with medical indication, since April 23rd, so soon a year, this intervention has been included in the GBA, i.e. in the Federal Assembly and included in the EBM, i.e. in the Unified Evaluation Scale. So that you can run it normally, like any other examination, like any other indicated operation, also over the cash registers. In the past it was the case that you submitted a pre-charge and then needed a feedback from the health insurance company. That all falls away. Of course, it is important to be medically correctly indicated. This means you must have a condition that justifies this procedure. But that is the case with every medical action. The subject of alternating years is of course also interesting in this regard. 
You are welcome to watch the video here. I explain all the basics and the topic of myomas that has triggered you again, what exactly that is, whether they are dangerous. You can take a look at that here. And the most important thing you can do now, of course, is to press the subscription button here, so that I can help you to help yourself better with this information that I provide here. See you in the next video again. Have fun until then and goodbye.